Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to you. Please stay and enjoy your food because uh, today I'm only going to show you three slides and most of the time I won't be talking. Why? Because I'm going to talk about zero trust and most people, every, almost everyone is thinking about zero trust. So what really is about zero trust? Just imagine you are the only one that can access to your own system. That is zero trust. You, not anybody else. Okay? So instead of me trying to you know, sell you something or tell, tell you the whole entire solution, I actually prepared today is to share with you what is really happening in the government and the banks. Because if you know what the root cause or what is happening, the problems, they have found solutions. And this is exactly what I'm going to share with you. Okay? Now let's understand the problem. For the government, I mean, uh, I have put out two latest issues. On the left hand side, you will realize they need to protect their critical assets, the information, the infrastructure that is supporting the citizens. However, Indonesia just recently, uh, they have a total, nearly total breach of 100 over uh, assets or servos with a very, very weak password. And they are using what we call the admin hash 1234 sh as their admin password. So they lost almost control of all their servers until even the hacker had to say that, never mind, I, I return it back to you. <laughs> but uh, just no, don't be so easy for us anymore. So the government naturally is panicking. Everyone, okay? Even in Singapore, we have outsourced, the government outsourced to an organization. Uh, it's stated there. Any, anyway, all these are public, all right? So not, nothing to, to be worried about that, how I share this. The, there's a staff in this company. He was fired. He came back and he's still or he still be able to access to the system. Now, he's a, he's a root admin. And how do they do that? Because he, they shared a root admin password and they forgot to revoke that when he left. So they only removed the ID of the person that has left, but forget that there's a shared password. Now, all this is indicating to one big issue, password. Password is the root of all the issues, the hacking. In fact, they don't hack in, they, they stole your ID and they lock it. So what is the solution for the government? Actually, in, on the 7th of April this year, I'm not talking about 10 years ago, the government actually mandated the, all the, uh, this is Singapore, by the way, I'm a Singaporean, so I spend a lot of time in the government. They have mandated that all the MFA is, can only be buy from, I mean, my company called Ubico, all right? So it is actually a zero trust MFA, okay? I'm not going to tell you the whole solution. Like I guess we've got no time. Now, going forward, there is another bigger issue, phishing. Do you know what is phishing? I'm sure sometimes you have experienced it and you're smart enough to avoid it, but currently our Singapore police already say it's impossible to avoid it. Because why? The second part, the phishing area. They have realized today the fake web login page, a fake page. You can't tell whether it's a URL, it's a different URL, or it's the same. It's exactly the same URL, which is the WW something. You can't tell the color, you can't tell the font, you can't, almost exactly the same. So how do you know which one is real or which one is fake? That is phishing. That is how they steal your, you key in your ID, your password, and you wait for your one-time PIN. You're familiar with one-time PIN, right? Whether your RSS token or you receive from an SMS on your mobile phone, you key in, top, that's it. They stole whatever you have given to them easily because you're full to key into the wrong web page. So these are the two big issues, weak password and phishing. And these are the two actions. What action they have done, this is very recent, uh, 9th of July, July. Today is, we just passed October. That's about three months, barely three months. 
the bank in Singapore regulator, the bank's regulator, MAS, had made data. In fact, all the banks are struggling now. Even before I flew here, on Sunday, we are all working with the banks. Okay, They have made data no more one-time PIN. When they say that, think harder. No one-time PIN means what? No password. Okay, I'm going to show you how actually FIDO, okay, FIDO is a solution, but give you, tell you, when they say no one-time PIN, no password and all those stuff, this is what is happening and this is the solution. You know, your multi-factor authentication is probably not good enough. With phishing attacks on the rise, you should be aware that not all MFA is created equal. Let's break it down. OTP, SMS, and push notification apps. Time and again, these legacy methods have been proven to be broken and easily bypassed by attackers. How? Let's demonstrate a phishing attack that fools software-based MFA. An attacker sends you a fake URL via email. You click on a link which directs you to a fake website that they've built. The website looks exactly like the real thing, so you enter your login credentials thinking it's the real site. Unfortunately, You've just handed over your credentials to the attacker, who can now log in to the real website. The real site triggers the SMS code, which is sent to your phone, and you enter this code on the fake website. Now the attacker has the SMS code as well, and enters it into the real website. Not only is the attacker able to successfully log in, they can also lock you out completely. With modern security keys that deliver phishing-resistant MFA, the phishing attack would have been prevented. Let's compare this scenario to what happens when you use modern phishing-resistant MFA, only offered by FIDO or Smart Card PIV protocols, using hardware security keys like the YubiKey. Rewinding. You've entered your credentials on the attacker's fake website. The attacker enters them on the real site, which invokes MFA by asking for FIDO authentication. But because continuing the authentication process on the real website requires you to physically tap or touch your security key, the attacker is stopped in their tracks. So even if modern phishing attacks fool the user, it can't fool modern security keys. The YubiKey is a powerful next-gen... Okay, I'm moving along. Uh, with the time constraint, I better show this. This is the scary part, the third item that came in. Last year, the banks have experienced, not only the banks, users like us. We experience what we call the malware. All right? And can Zero Trust tackle the malware issue? Now, you might be asking, what malware? What is it? What, what, what is it about? Is it a virus? Is it what? No. This malware can actually remote control your mobile phone. It can remote control your desktop. It can wipe out your bank account. Now, Currently, this malware is already at the advanced stage, all right? We are all trying to understand AI and all those stuff. That's why cybersecurity people are very concerned. But let me tell you, the dark side has already deployed AI on the malware. So I'm going to show you the malware that is slow motion. Eh? Because if I show you something this year, uh, you almost cannot catch up. It's in seconds and wipe out your bank account. So let, let's go for this and I left with one minute and let's do that. Oh my gosh, why is the phone moving on its own? Habi, quick! This could be you. Plus, if you have a habit of saving your username and passwords on a note app on your device, you could be doubly vulnerable to malware scams. Here's how it happens. You come across an ad on social media for seafood, manto, beer, mooncakes or cleaning services. You start a chat on Messenger to discuss your purchase. They ask you for your mobile number to WhatsApp you. They then send you a link to click and download an app to choose your products and make your purchase. On WhatsApp, they'll tell you you've been given a $10 rebate and ask you to check your bank account. You'll open your bank app, type in your username, password and OTP and see the money credited. What a good deal. Not. Here's where the trouble starts. The app you downloaded contains malware, giving the scammer remote access to view and control your device. By asking you to access your bank app, they were able to record your username and password. At night, when you were unaware, they remotely accessed your phone. They clicked on your bank app, keyed in your username and password, 
and wait for the SMS OTP to come through. Before inputting the number and logging into your bank account, they delete the SMS, so you would never know they were even there. Once logged into your app, they then increase your funds transfer limit, add new payees, and make funds transfers out of your account. You don't even know it's happening. Okay, so that ends my presentation and i uh, let you know that this is where the Singapore government is very concerned. Do apply it to your corporation if you find it uh, important to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Derek. Look, you left us on that scary note. <laughs> okay. All right, so moving on, there's a lot that we still need to learn. Uh, zero trust, multi-factor authentication, and the YubiKey.